Yeah, thanks again for being with us today. No problem. It's how, nice being here. How is it going? I mean, it's been a wild year. Yeah. It the is. last the last so you've been here <laughs> you've been here in August 2018, I think the last time. I yeah. don't know if you remember. I what? remember being here. Oh, yeah, you did. I, yeah, I do. W what happened since then? Well, I've just been I've been writing a lot, finishing my album. Um I've been uh, I've been playing gigs just I mean just working a lot I think actually um the, the past year has been you know just so much happened first tour first first songs uh, now first album um so it's just been it's been working and just trying to trying to keep up with everything I think <laughs> how's how's Rolf doing I mean Rolf, he, he, he was three <laughs> weeks old I think when you when you've been here last time oh seriously oh well he's almost a year now oh uh he's he's got, getting bigger I can tell you that he's a big boy now um but he's doing good actually he was just sick he uh he had like this attack where he like I think it was epileptic oh um, okay so he went to the veterinarian got a lot of shots just the other day but I think he's better now My girlfriend keeps sending me pictures of him like playing around, so I know he's good. So that's good. <laughs> yeah, but he's still grounded because he's a cover model now. Yes, exactly. I mean, it's tr it's hard for him, you know. When he walks on the street, he knows he's a model now. You can feel <laughs> that in the park with the other dogs. <laughs> I, I want to dive right into your new album. So uh, yeah. congratulations to that. It just Thank you. you just released it today, Juvenile. Yeah. Um, It's to sum it up. It's a bit about growing up, about youth, about yeah. making mistakes sometimes, about mm. love, relationships. Um, so you're 20 years old. Um, would you say that you're still not an adult, or yes. just not feeling as one? I mean, I would say, um, you know, a way to describe it is, I always wanted to be older than I am. Um, ever since I was like 13, when I was a kid, I always wanted to hang out with the older boys. I always wanted to have the older girlfriend. Um, and I think for the first time now, like I'm, I'm actually okay with being 20 years old. You know, I'm not trying to be anything that I'm not. Um, and yeah, I think the album is. I'm. I don't feel a doll, but I don't feel like a kid anymore. I feel like I'm. I'm right in the middle. Mm -hmm. I'm, not, I'm not part of one side or the other. So um, for me, juvenile is also just like a word that describes both of those sides, like coming into the adulthood, but not really. Uh, yeah. So how would you describe your teenage Hugo in three <laughs> words, maybe? Teenage Hugo. Um, crazy. Um, reckless. Okay. Uh, cool. I don't know. Cool. It's hard. Yeah, cool. Why not? I like the word cool. Okay. Why crazy? <laughs> Just doing... doing. Um, I mean, crazy and reckless is pretty much the same thing. Just like... Maybe doing things I shouldn't. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay. Um, so your album, I, I must admit, I really love it. And I'm just not saying that because you're standing in front of me. I really liked it. So I, I heard it uh, yesterday all the time. Nice. And it's amazing how you put together all these different genres in it, mm, you know? Yeah. Like um, how you made it sound so modern, but you still have this these kind of country a bit, yeah, this yeah. kind of R&B. Uh, how did you do that? I mean, um, the guy that I write all the music with and produce all the music with, Emil, uh, me and him were very much the same. We uh, we came from the blues music, the country music, and we wanted to do like a pop record, but that doesn't sound like a pop record today, but sounds a bit like everything that we know, also like country music. And, you know, there's a lot of pedal steel on it, a lot of guitar everywhere. Mm -hmm. um, and for me, it's important, you know, I think right now, You know, when you listen to a lot of music, it's it has the same kind of theme in the songwriting. Um, and I want to write something that's, I don't know, um, just, uh, just it's it has to be close to me for me to write it. I have to have experienced it in some kind of way with a friend or have seen it somewhere. Mm -hmm. So I think we just, we sat like for so long just thinking about everything, every little detail about the music, about... Um, about how we should write the songs. So I think that the way we did this was just like maybe to take too much time to do it. I think, uh, yeah. Okay, talking about country, I mean, uh, I feel like there's a big country in home, in, yeah. the, in the single home. Yeah. And uh, also in uh, Eyes Wide Shut, that guitar solo, <laughs> yeah, I really exactly. love that. <laughs> But um, what is your inspiration on that? Or what was your inspiration on that? I mean, of course, you know, we've listened like, to a lot of James Taylor, uh, Keith mm -hmm. Urban as well. I, I don't know, I'll just, I think Keith Urban, Keith, Ur Keith Urban is very nice. Yeah. Um, Taylor Swift as well, uh, her old stuff. 
I mean, just just like a lot of old like pop country music. Uh, yeah. So I feel like the album is kind of a journey. So you, mm -hmm. you start in your youth talking about all their problems, all yeah. their relationship stuff. Mm -hmm. And in the end, there's that single home, mm -hmm. which is kind of a happy ending, isn't it? Yeah, it is. I mean, home is like, it's like a fiction story about this guy who just screwed everything up. He lost everything and now he can't, he can't like cope with it. Um, but he's singing about how he got back and how he found his way home. Um, and I think it's actually the way you see it, like that's the same way I see it from the start. That mm -hmm. you start in your youth, and then it builds up to actually get to what you can kind of say is a destination. But of course, it's not. Um, but yeah, I think it's an happy ending. It's like I think you can say it. It's both ways. But, but I, I would say it's happy as well. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So. I think you found your happy ending. It, it sounds a bit like your your girlfriend plays a big part in that yeah, in that happy yeah, ending. For sure, for sure. I mean, my girlfriend, she's been the world to me. Um, my fiance now, she is. Um, she really helps me. Congrats like, to that. Uh, thank by you. The way. Thank you. She really helps me um, stay grounded in all of this music business thing. Um, and just like being home with her and my dog Rolf, <laughs> so that's that's actually the the thing I like the most is just being home on the couch with those two. Yeah. So how did you do the proposal? Can you can you tell us? <laughs> did you sing? Uh, no, I didn't. I okay. Mean, um, actually, we we went to Paris like just before I did it, but I thought it was too corny to do it in Paris. So uh, I waited till we got home, and I just did it in my pajamas in the night. Just very very simple. Oh. Um, And uh, she came home from Cuba. So uh, <laughs> so when she arrived home, I was, you know, I had some champagne. I had my, like, pajamas on. And um, I just, like, lit some candles. And then and then I did it, like, at home. I thought so she'd like that more. And, yeah, and she actually, she said she liked that I didn't do it on a restaurant or something because... Uh, Because it, she would have been so... Like, yeah, if it's uh, like, uh, yeah. all eyes on you. And I was like, if she's going to say no, nobody's going to see it. <laughs> yeah, right, right. But she didn't expect it? Or did no, you talk I, about that before? I think she's, she like she threw hints at me at some point, like, mm -hmm. like just put a ring on it. Like, okay. Yeah. You know, but um, but no, I don't think she expected it. She, she was very surprised, at least, yeah. That's good, that's good. Mm. So next to love, there's another part in your album, which is uh, a little bit of social media stuff. Yeah. So you're talking about that you, that is sometimes annoying, that mm. uh, people fake or just pose in a way that actually don't behave like. Mm. And um, so you're not really into that Instagram and Facebook stuff? Well, I mean, I use Instagram a lot, um, also for promotion. And yeah, I, and I don't Because think, you have to I, at least. But yeah, but, but I don't think Instagram or Facebook is bad. I just think... When you use too much time on it, and when you try, like when you edit your pics and stage everything, and you know, take pictures of your food and how you, how everything looks perfect, everything is in a white room or on a white table. Mm -hmm. You know, that's that's not a real life. Yeah. So I think the problem is also for young girls when they see these crazy fit models just looking perfect. Mm. They want to be like that, <laughs> and that's not like that's not how you should be. Um, so I don't think the problem is like the media. I just think. Sometimes the way people use it can be a bit over the top. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. So Hugo help me for more realness on Instagram. Yeah, for sure. I mean, it's it's hard doing it. I find it hard too, you know, like putting something up that you're not completely satisfied yeah, right. with. Exactly. But it's a nice like thing to do uh, or try to do. Mm. Um because it's gonna it's gonna benefit you in the in the end. It's gonna be more it's gonna be nicer for you to feel like yourself on there if you use yeah. it. Yeah. So I don't know if you remember, but um, we got that uh, song in Germany, which is called Tränen lügen nicht, so tears don't lie. <laughs> um, and this uh, a rhyme on Tränen in Germany is yeah. Dänen, so Danish people. Okay. So we say Danish people don't lie. Oh, So um, well, I don't know if that's true. <laughs> yeah, we, we want to try out. So I want to prove that it's true. So I've got okay. six questions for you. You really have to answer honestly. Throw them at me. Okay, there we go. First one is, um, your album is about being young. We already talked about that. Yeah. Doing stupid things. What was your most embarrassing uh, thing you did when you were youth? Or maybe when you were drunk the last Yes. I mean, I don't know what the most embarrassing thing was, but I did a very stupid thing not too long ago. I like, you know, down at the harbor, the big cranes. I was very, very drunk and I like climbed all the way to the top of the biggest one and it's so dangerous you know i had no control um, and i and when i was up there i felt it like moving and it was just like that was uh, when i got when i got home you know the next morning i told my mom about it she almost hit me i mean gosh <laughs> how, how old have you been there 
It's about maybe five months ago. Oh, okay. Yeah, so it's not like. So you're still a party animal. No, I w- no, I wouldn't say I, I am anymore. Like, I never actually been a party animal. But you know, when I go out with my friends, we do it probably. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> you go out with your friends. <laughs> right. Okay. Um, what was your first celebrity crush? Did you have one? Uh, believe it or not, it was Kylie Minogue. Woo! Yeah, I was uh, five not the years, worst. I was five years old, um, and I and I saw this picture of her in one of my mom's lady magazines, uh, where she had the Superwoman costume on. Um, a very famous picture of her, and I just fell in love. So I like uh, this is this is true. When I went to bed at night, you know, you know, I had like this Kylie Minogue uh, CD, yeah. and when I wanted to sleep, my mom read like the CD cover for me. <laughs> read Kylie, I said, <laughs> <laughs> like a fairy tale or something. Yeah, exactly. Your mom didn't read fairy tales. She, she read. But that's the, actually the true. From, from Kylie, uh, so yeah. it was so weird. But I don't know why. Yeah. Um, next one. What is your worst habit? It's smoking, for sure. Do you uh, still, or did you stop it? Yeah, I mean, I'm trying to stop all the time. Like, <laughs> I, I'm, I, I might be trying to stop like once every week. Uh, sometimes I've been doing it for a while. Sometimes it's like two days. It's, mm. It it kind of swings. But you know, I, when I'm on tour, I try to smoke as little as possible. Mm. Uh, sometimes not even at all. If, Som- sometimes good to calm down yeah, with all ex- the stress. Yeah, exactly. Okay. You know, it's it's hard for me to stop right now because. Every time I do something new or have to be on edge in some kind of way, all I want to do is like get the nerves down. <laughs> um, so yeah, it's very hard to stop, but I really want to. Okay. Yeah. Um, do you have a most embarrassing favorite song? So a song which is actually like not, <laughs> not that proper? Um, I mean, I don't know if it's embarrassing. I, I don't think it's embarrassing, but uh, End of the Road, Boys to Men. Okay. No, that's okay. It is, right? Yeah. Yeah, that's a good it's song. Not, yeah. yeah. It's not the worst one. No, exactly. Um, <laughs> so you already talked about, uh, with a morning show about that, we got that um, super hit countdown mm-hmm. over the Easter holidays. Mm-hmm. Um, could you please repeat uh, the song you would wish and why? Um, hmm. So you well, can choose any song, whatever any, you want. Any song. Yeah. Can it be a slow song? It can uh, be a slow song, sure. Okay. Uh, no, I'll I'll do I'll do stitches with Sean Mendes yeah. again. Uh, I I just like that song. I think it's one of the best pop songs that's been around for many years. I don't know. I think the production, the songwriting as well. It just it fits so well together. Have you met him? I never met him. No, not yet. No, not yet. At least <laughs> maybe someday. Yeah, maybe. Who knows? <laughs> um, so last one is in your songs. Um, you also uh, sing about trying new things. Mm. Is there anything you would actually like to do someday, but you 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 don't dare right now? I don't dare. Hmm. I don't know if I don't dare. I always wanted to like try to play golf. I don't know mm. why. I think I dare to do it. I just haven't had like. You know, I hadn't gotten myself to do it yet, but I want to try golf. I don't know why. It just seemed so fun when you look at it, like maybe hitting, the, m- hitting maybe that ball. It just when you hit that one, I yeah, I think it feels good. Maybe that's a new new uh, kind of thing to calm down a bit. Yeah, maybe to stop smoking. <laughs> um, I can golf instead. Yeah, right. W- w- what about a carnival, a Mardi Gras in Denmark? Is it a big thing there, or is it just? Well, you know it, but you don't celebrate it. Mm, I actually don't know what it like. What, what carnival, Mardi Gras? How? What is that? A, a carnival is like, um, uh, oh yeah, telling jokes and uh, getting into costume. And, oh yeah, we uh, have like we have something called a uh, festelaun. Oh okay. Um, it's I think it's in February actually. It's just been there, and then you dress up as you know whatever you want, and then you it's called beat the cat from the. I don't. It's it's very weird to translate it, but then okay. you have a lot of candy, these big barrels. And oh yeah, you hit right. it with a bat, so it comes out all the kids in the schools. So it's yeah, oh, we okay. celebrate that one. Yeah. Okay, so we have in Germany carnival, mm. and we've got these things called Büttenrede. Mm. So it's a kind of a rhyme, mostly funny way people perform on stage, mm. and we prepared a Büttenrede for you. Okay. <laughs> Let's see. That one out. I'll try. It's a German. I can help you if you. I'll try. Uh, if you need any. Ihr Deutschen feiert, feiert Karneval. Hm? Gott sei Dank nicht überall. Hm? Ich brauche das nicht. Das ist der Schöne. Denn ich bin nun mal Dane. Right. That was good. Dane. 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 <laughs> should, should I translate it? So it actually yeah. means you yeah. Germans celebrate Carnival, but. Uh, f- uh, 
luckily not all over the world, just in Germany. <laughs> and uh, I don't need it to celebrate because I'm a Danish people. We don't do that. <laughs> Oh, I think I didn't know that was what it meant. But I I mean, we celebrate carnival, but I, I think, you know, every in a different country, way. Yeah, I think every country has like their own kind of carnival mm-hmm. um, and a different part of the year. I think it's like very normal to have. Do you yeah. remember your last costume? Have you ever had one? I, I, I had one when I was a kid. Um, you know, you also go around to the neighbors like begging for like, like Halloween. Halloween. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Um, I remember I was a Robin Hood at some point, but it's mm-hmm. a long time ago. Yeah. Okay. I was a cute Robin Hood. I was like very, very small walking <laughs> around. <laughs> so Hugo Helmi, thank you so yeah, much pleasure. for being here with us. Pleasure. Um, I just have to take a look. You start touring in about a week. Yeah. First stops in your home country, Denmark. Yes. Um, but you also come to Germany. We're looking forward to see you in Hamburg. In yeah. 2nd of April, 11th of April in Berlin. Mm-hmm. Have you ever played live concert in Germany? Yeah, I have quite a few times. Uh, both radio things and okay. and and concert festivals, uh, yeah. Oh, okay. So uh, you're not that nervous anymore? No, I mean I'm nervous, of course. I mean it's 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 you know when it's a new country. Um, I mean I'm still nervous in Denmark. It's been one year, so I'm I'm everything. I'm still yeah. nervous, um, but that's a good thing. That means you you care about it. So I'm just looking forward to showing everyone the new songs and and the new show we put together. Sure. Yeah. I'm sure you'll make it. Thank you. Thank you so much for being with us. It was a pleasure. Thank you.